What's up guys and welcome back for another solo mining episode, episode 51. So this episode we're going to be talking quite a bit about mining for manufacturing, kind of what that entails, and also our kind of goals moving forward for the next few episodes or so. Now, there is something, I, we're probably going to be doing a, a bit of a few things, a, a bit of a few objectives. But one of the things I wanted to do was when we started this season or this series, we started off as an alpha essentially with just a venture and we just mined with that venture up until we were able to pay for Omega. And it took some time as you can imagine. One of the things I want to do moving forward is to actually do the same thing, but as a max, as a now max skilled Omega miner and just kind of compare the difference see kind of how fast we can do it now with a Mackinac and max skills as opposed to how it was as an alpha with just the venture the other thing i'm going to be doing too is we're going to be tracking our revenue earned through the value of the ore that we mine and then once we actually kind of complete that goal we kind of see how long it takes for you know an omega solo player to you know earn enough for omega We'll take all that ore that we mined in that time frame and we will use it for manufacturing whether we'll probably be doing a little bit of high sec manufacturing and i'll kind of go through the process and kind of the pipeline for how that goes and then another thing i want to do is be able to go in and actually export the ore from high sec into null sec where we have our null sec tune and do a little bit more advanced um, stuff there. They might, there might be a little bit of crossover between this series and the solo null sec series, but definitely my plan is to move more into manufacturing um, on both uh, series. A lot of what you're gonna be seeing in like the null sec uh, series for manufacturing is gonna be reactions. I know a lot of people have been requesting me kind of like go through the whole reaction process, whether it be in a dedicated video in one of the R1 in one of these episodes. But I think that it'd be better to actually just kind of dedicate reactions to its own episode in the NullSec series because that's primarily where you're going to be doing reactions. Now, you've probably noticed a little bit of change to my UI. I moved things around a little bit just to kind of like shake things up a bit. But I also just managed to, I, I basically made a new overview tab for Veldspar. A lot of what I've been doing is just like just targeting Veldspar like crazy. Now, currently, right now with the Mackinac, if I go out and just get Veldspar, in about 20 minutes, I can do about 6 million. So as you can tell, that's you know not a whole lot. We'd be looking at doing probably about 16 runs a day. So uh, you know around 5 hours of mining for like 30 days to get Omega. Now, we, we can kind of supplement that and help ourselves out by doing like rare ore mining and stuff like that. But... For me personally, I like to minimize the amount of downtime and travel because while the rare ore is worth a lot more and can kind of move our our uh, progress a lot quicker, it's a lot better and it's a lot more efficient for me to just kind of just have lasers up on just the more common and abundant ores there that are here in uh, in high sec. So. I think that's going to be a good metric. We're going to try to set the rules for like our, um, our, you know, mining for Omega, you know, pretty early on and not deviate too much from it. So really the, uh, the way we're going to have it set up is we're going to just have one Mackinac, this one character. So no alts or anything like that, no boost. And we'll be just going after high sec or whether it be Veldspar or Plague or whatever, just that's all we're going to be mining. And we're going to just see how long it takes to get the, the, uh, the ISK value that is required. I'm going to say that it's possible. We like, we could probably do it in like, uh, I, I, it's very, very possible to do it in 30 days, but also we want to be able to actually like earn our Omega time through our mining and also have funds left over to fuel other activities in the game because if all you're ever doing is mining and everything that you're doing is 100% going to Omega then you're really just kind of like playing to to pay playing to pay to play 
so we will be looking at a lot of different um, scenarios and like and also just like day to day like there will be some days where we can't do a lot of mining and then other days we can do quite a bit so moving forward at least for the next like 30 or so episodes our main focus is going to be that kind of omega grind challenge and like i said the byproduct of that is going to be uh, having a ton of ore that we can do manufacturing with and uh send to nullsec to do manufacturing so that's really kind of my goal moving forward it's a little tedious um as far if like especially when you have a goal like that you it's just tedious regardless because you automatically give yourself you automatically give yourself like you know something that you have to accomplish every day instead of it being just kind of like you know out for fun and and whatever but just kind of how it goes for me a lot of my omegas are covered by um kind of like everything that you know i do across all my tunes so the income that comes out of null sec and the income that comes out of uh, this character and the income that my main produces you know all that stuff kind of contributes to the omega that's why i'm going to be tracking the value that we're mining and like the progress we're doing through the compressed ore value that we're going to be stacking because essentially we uh, we already have omega covered for this character right but we want to actually like make sure that we can reasonably do the amount of mining required in a 30-day period to kind of get there All right, so while we're mining here, I'm going to talk a little bit about manufacturing and how it kind of differs whether or not you're doing it in high sec or in null sec. A lot of it has to do with just getting stuff sold. Like, that's your biggest thing. Is like, for me, in most cases, it's almost, it's easier just to save yourself all the, the steps of manufacturing and researching BPOs it's it's almost easier to just sell the ore and then not even worry about all the other steps if you know you're not making that much of a profit a lot of what we're going to be focusing on man, on making is going to be um a, a, we're going to be looking at stuff that's really good as far as uh, profit margins now i use the term transformative when it comes to manufacturing so in a lot of cases i will only make stuff that is basically transformative in a sense that let me get these lasers on so if i can take the 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 ore that i'm using to to build something and i can take that value of that ore and i can double its value in its end product then i would call that transformative the other thing you have to worry about too is in most cases you're going to take the the raw material which is going to weigh less than the end product and you're creating something that's worth more but it weighs a lot more or has a higher volume and you have to worry about logistics. That's really kind of the main focus of this episode. We're going to be talking about logistics. We're going to be talking about how to actually like get stuff sold. Because it doesn't matter what you make or how much it's worth. If you can't get it sold and converted into your wallet, then it's really not too terribly useful. In high sec, doing manufacturing is a challenge because you feel the pressure to move all of your products to a major hub um for me it would be like you know taking everything to gita there's a lot of risk in moving manufactured goods to gita because you know you have people watching the gates you can just you know, run into a lot of problems a lot of what i've actually done recently is go ahead and get some more targets up is i don't even worry too much about actually taking stuff to Jita. in most of the, most cases whatever i produce where i'm at right now i'll probably just sell at the closest market and just hope to move those products um and also i will be posting everything on sell orders in like the three month uh the max kind of uh posting time frame because we're looking really far out, right? We're not looking to like just make a bunch of things and then hopefully sell them all in the first day. That's kind of re unrealistic, but really it's more about just keeping uh, keeping stuff on the market that can be sold. Get some more targets here. Kind of just slowly moving around this little belt here. Go and fly over here too. 
And that's just kind of one of the challenges with high seg because, you know, you could be out in the very far stretches of space where you're not near any major hub and you're making all these cool things. But then, you know, it's a really high volume on your end product. So you either have to like think about putting in a freighter and then risking that freighter going from where you're at to market to post it. That can be, um, that can be very stressful. That's why I almost always prefer to do manufacturing in null sec because in most cases everything you, you can jump stuff around high sec as well by using like low sec um, systems but in the thing about null sec manufacturing is, is like no matter where you are in null sec you can just kind of jump stuff around pretty easily to main markets and at least for the situation that I'm in in null sec I'm like one jump from where the alliance has a market that they can we I can sell locally and it's also a really good place to kind of put up contracts as well because it's a centralized location where a lot of people will have like sino ships um stationed because other people will come in and buy stuff off the market buy stuff off contract or they're get, getting stuff you know sent from jita so they're all in that one endpoint. so putting up contracts in those systems and selling stuff in those systems is really nice uh, because it's already kind of like pre-staged for that and just whenever and then you have the option of just like taking like a jump freighter and just filling up the jump freighter with a bunch of manufactured goods and jumping it out if you don't sell it on contract if you don't sell it on the alliance market then you can just in a lot of what a lot of alliances do a lot they have a jump rating service so i can jump to that like keepstar or whatever with all my manufactured goods i can create another courier contract there and basically send it all to Jita and you know be done with it and that has collateral on it so even if that stuff gets lost I'm still not out and then I essentially just have to wait um, and when it you know shows up in Jita I jump clone down there and post it up on sell orders and kind of just do everything like that that's actually a lot better in my opinion in, for manufacturing because when you're in null sec you have the access to like toyos you have access to really big um, engineering complexes and it's just overall you know bigger structures better rigs and if you have all the skills you can just do a lot better on you know, manufacturing time research times uh, mineral efficiency all that stuff the trick about um, null sec though is if you're not like actively ratting and using scrap metal processing and melting stuff down to get trit you almost always need to like bring in um trit from high sec which is a big role that this character here is going to play in our overall manufacturing this character is essentially going to sit out here in high sec and while that's the reason i'm like focusing veldspar right now because if this character does nothing but mine veldspar and then i just you know compress it and then every time i can fill up the mackinac with compressed belts bar i fly it to jita i then courier contract it out to null sec and then when it shows up there i can reprocess it and i can use it for manufacturing and make an end product and all that stuff it's just it just works out a whole lot better than trying to manufacture in a engineering complex a smaller engineering complex here in high sec in most cases it'll be a engineering complex that is owned by a corporation that i do not have associations with so there's risk there as well because you don't know if you're going to wake up one day and they're unanchoring that structure because you know your manufacturing got jobs can be you know be up to like 30 days long so unless you have a really good idea because if you start a job if you start a manufacturing job that's going to take 30 days and then you see that a structure is going to be unanchored and you cancel that job, all those input materials are going to be gone. So it's, it's, it's a safe idea that if you're going to do any sort of high volume manufacturing to only do it in structures that you know are stable and you, you're going to at least be given some sort of a notice if they're going to unanchor it. And in most cases in null sec, most structures are pretty much good to go especially to toyos and stuff like that they're <clears throat> gonna be good to go unless they're destroyed which is a very rare occurrence uh, in most cases but the uh the main goal for this series is we're gonna be just kind of like doing the whole like omega earning uh kind of challenge at the omega level with max skills 
and then I want to be able to show kind of like the uh, the pipeline for manufacturing and we'll be basically following the ore from this character all the way to the character that's in null through the manufacturing process and then back all the way to Jita. So essentially from rock to end product at Jita, it'll go through like two characters and we'll see our, our profits at the end. I'll make a spreadsheet. And we'll be uh, tracking all of our costs and everything like that. Because for me, I track everything. I track job costs. I track uh, absolutely everything that you know goes into uh, manipulating my profit margin. So, and I price my stuff <clears throat> accordingly because I, I like to just break even. I, I, I don't want to just break even. I want to actually like try to double my ISP. But we might actually do some crazy stuff um, here just to kind of like show the manufacturing process and come some things you can do. So, the next episode or so, we might actually just burn um, some trit just to like build some uh, a crazy amount of stuff, and then just kind of show like what it really entails in getting in products to Jita without like a freighter or even with a freighter. I mean, freighters. I don't think I bought a, a proper freighter in years. Um, everything I've used in more recent times has just been like jump freighters, or I'll go lower with like a deep space transport or a blockade runner um, and just take more, more I'd rather take more trips to market and get it, everything there safely than attempt to essentially move like 1.1 million cubic meters in a like a Sharon or something and risk losing it all in one go right it's like all about patience patience is how you're successful in everything <clears throat> guys you're here I have I have this um, overview set up. I can show you kind of how to set this up too. Is <clears throat> if you go to overview settings, you can go in here and just type like a name in here. I have just veld. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then over here, I just had like the uh, the default all uh, filter, and you can actually go over here to that all filter, and then you can just deselect everything. So for the case of like veld, I just deselected everything, and then I would just go over here to the veld bar on the mining tab and just. Um, assign it or show it on the Veld overview, and then essentially just you know only sh now it only shows Veldsvar, and I used to have filters like this for every um, ore type, um, but it got kind of ridiculous. So you can actually, um, if you wanted to like for uh, for whatever reason decide you wanted to track like Pyro or Plag or something other than Veldsvar. You could just right click on any of these and you can remove it from the overview and then just you know add the other one but this allows me to actually sort by distance it allows me to just not have to look at all the other types of where i'm not really worried about now we won't necessarily since we we do have a goal of actually moving all this uh, or essentially to null sec we primarily need trit out there because we get a lot of like the mexilon um pyrite and stuff like that from like moon mining but I think that, you know, for best practices, we will be looking at just mining a bunch of stuff. So we'll be mining like entire belts for the most part, especially if we have to do like 16 day or 16 trips a day, which I don't think it'll actually end up being that crazy. But we'll kind of this episode, we're going to kind of see how far we go and kind of what value we can stack um, in terms of that. But like this right now, we're on essentially trip number one of what would essentially have to be like 16 trips, which is uh, is pretty crazy. I probably won't show every single trip. We'll probably uh, kind of like uh, splice in, you know, kind of progress as we go here. And, you know, as I talk more about manufacturing. But really the uh, <clears throat> the main the main purpose for this episode is just to really kind of like talk through my my thoughts and my strategy in terms of manufacturing a lot I, you have to think about a lot of things when you like start getting into manufacturing it's not as simple as just like buying a bunch of bpos of things that you like and then you know you know start making stuff right you have to think about like logistics logistics is huge for manufacturing because you have to be able to actually like not only make the stuff or be close enough to where you can transport the materials to a place where you can actually make it, but also be able to take that end product to market, whether that be flying it, you know, X amount of jumps to Jita or shoving it in a 
jump freighter and jumping it to a keep star and then courier contracting it out of null or selling it there in place this little you have to think about all that stuff because for instance like if let's say you um took basically just nothing but tread and you turned it into like Caldari shuttles if you run like the Caldari shuttle blueprint maxed out for 30 days you're gonna get like 500 and something shuttles and the volume of those shuttles is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 270,000 cubic meters which is substantial right now you probably want to run like four bpos um and you know in a 30-day period you'd want to probably produce like a million cubic meters so that you can fill up a share on and take it to market but your profits on that essentially the value in making like 500 or something calorie shuttles is like the material cost would be like six million but then like if you sold them all at current market value you'd be looking at like 10 million which is great those are great great numbers as far as profit margins go but there's a ceiling on the amount of volume you can do now you can go even crazier with this and you could have all your skills maxed out where you can do like 11 manufacturing jobs so you have 11 bpos and you're you know every 30 days you're uh, every you're running the maximum amount of manufacturing so you have like 11 bpos all making 500 and something shuttles which means that you're gonna have to do like several trips in like a jump freighter or a, a freighter to get all that stuff to market but at the end of the day that's still only like you're you're gonna spend the value of the materials will be like 70 million or so and then like you might um, end up making after uh selling 110 so you're still only looking at like 40 million uh, profit which is <clears throat> not great and it's not like you can make more than that unless you have more bpos or bpcs and you have a bunch of characters and a bunch of logistics so picking the right item that has a, a decent enough profit margin has a decent enough um, isk per m3 that makes logistics easier and also has a fairly high volume ceiling that because like for me i it, for me a lot of my uh i, I guess my threshold is like i want to be able to like if i run a bpc or, or a bpo for 30 days i want my profits off of that 30 days to be minimum a billion right that means that like the the amount of uh stuff going in the value of the materials going in my and then versus the profit after sold i want the profit to be a billion if i'm going to have a bpo running for 30 days i want to at least be able to make a billion on profit on that that way i know that if i do use all 11 manufacturing slots i could potentially be looking at around 10 mil or 10 billion profit for the month that's kind of the goal that we're going to be moving into and a lot it's that's going to be really difficult on just entry level bpos because you're just not going to be able to do that kind of volume and the value is really not going to be there um that's why fuel blocks is really good because fuel blocks do have the ability to kind of be the volume the volume of which you can do via fuel blocks on the manufacturing level can get you there really, really quick but there's a lot more than just mining that goes into that as well all right so hold on we've got a we're full up now <clears throat> i'm sitting here talking i'm not even realize we're completely full but we might actually i might actually go more in depth and like we might end up doing like a uh, fuel block stuff i'm probably gonna have to bring another character out to nullsec in order to actually kind of set up i don't want to interrupt my uh current pi right now because we're going to have to go several we're going to, have to do several systems of different pi and then also do ice mining to do fuel blocks but fuel blocks is one of the best things to manufacture if you're really looking to make a decent amount of profit and by decent i mean like uh, profit more than like five billion a month right on a single character but uh, also nanite repair pace is really really good as well it's just difficult with the repair pace because you have to you know not every system is gonna have every um pi that you need so you have to split your pi across multiple systems which can be kind of obnoxious but that might be something we entertain as well but with that being said there is something to be said about you know not leaving any sort of like isk on the table 
So, for instance, like this character right now is primarily in high sec, as you know, and we're going to be setting up PI on this character in high sec. Obviously, PI in high sec is not great, but the thing is, is this character has all the skills to be able to do all the PI. And while it's not great, we have, well, it's in, in comparison, in comparing high sec PI to like null sec PI, it's like night and day. But even if we pay like a higher tax rate and stuff like that in high sec, we're still, we're still producing something passively with that. Otherwise, we're just kind of leaving that money on the table for the most part. They'll, that'll probably be its own episode. I still have to get like command centers out here and kind of set everything up, figure out what I'm doing. But that's just a good way to actually like just, you know, kind of produce products in addition to our mining. And also, if we're already, that's the other thing too, is like what I used to do for a long time is I used to only mine like Trit and then that character would do nothing but like mine high sec ore and we'd just export it out. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great strategy. But if we already know we want to do like things like fuel blocks or nanite repair paste and we want to make that stuff in null sec, then there's no reason why if we're not already exporting stuff out to, uh, if we're not, we're already exporting ore out to, to null sec, so we might as well be exporting some of the missing PI that we wouldn't necessarily have access to in our constellation there in null sec with that ore. That just allows us to have like more options, um, because the reason I don't like to do um, a lot of the reason I don't like to split my PI too much across uh, individual systems is because it just it takes a lot of time just to kind of fly between those systems, pick everything up, even if you're only doing it every four days or so. So what we're going to be looking at setting up is we're going to be looking at the system or the planet types that are available in our Noltec system, and. We're going to be looking at it through the lens of what is required for fuel blocks, what is required for nanite repair paste, and we will produce on that character in Nullsec what we can there, but then also if we have this character out here in high sec doing stuff, we're going to see what she can produce, even at a lower volume, for PI to just ship alongside our ore to help with that. Nano repair base is one of those things that's really, really good because it is strictly made from PI. PI is a very uh, passive thing once you have it set up. And so once Nano repair base is made, the is for M3 is great because it weighs very little. It's a great export. You could export it at a, in ridiculous profit. I used to actually export in a crow, like literally put like a, fill the crow up with just Nano repair base. Um, and fly it out just mainly just for shits and giggles but even if you're like a crane with you know maxed out uh, like 12,000 cubic meters of a crane filling that up with nanite repair paste is great profit but also nanite repair paste is really good to like pad um, pad uh, courier contracts that have a little bit um, that have, like fuel blocks fuel blocks are really not great is prim 3 you never like you know pay a courier contract for the alliance to ship um, nothing but pure fuel blocks out to Jita because you end up paying more for the for the service than what you profit in fuel blocks but what I end up doing there is I end up padding those contracts with like more fight or nanite repair base something that has really really high as prim 3 and just kind of putting that in with the fuel blocks and essentially what ends up happening is it doesn't matter if we're, we've got like a crazy amount of fuel blocks in there the amount of more fighter and repair paste in that trip makes it uh, makes the trip worth it. It makes this uh, breaks this. It doesn't even break this even. It makes it a profit over everything because it would be very difficult to actually um, you know mine enough um, merc to have you know two hundred or three hundred thousand cubic meters of morphite. You would take months and months and months to get that kind of volume. That would be a great payday when you got the Gita. So. <clears throat> normally what I used to do is whenever I was building my uh, or when I was manufacturing fuel blocks when I was getting ready to actually ship that stuff out to uh, Jita I would just go on like a day or two a uh, stint of just doing nothing but merc mining and then reprocess it all into morphite shove that in with the uh, fuel blocks and that made that made the whole uh, that made that uh, export contract 
uh, work financially for the most part. All right, we go. Let's so compress, and that's kind of like the goal here. Is I usually just fill up, go here, compress, and then I go drop it off in my HQ, and then uh, take a little break, and then head back out. I don't try unless I'm in a hurry, or I have a very small window of play. I don't really like chain. Um, I don't really don't chain uh, trips out back to back if I can help it because it just this helps with uh, just kind of overall progression through the day. And honestly, like 16 trips out sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. Especially if you can like come, if you are able to like space it out over the course of, of several days. Now you'll probably notice here, I have, like I was talking about shuttles. I have a lot of uh, shuttle, I have 11 Kaldari shuttle blueprints. And I think I want to just kind of talk about this and kind of show you the num numbers a little bit better here if I can. So right now she's still training a lot of her science skills to get up to that 11 research job kind of thing. But as you see right here, she's essentially just uh, mineral efficiency training or researching these BPOs. And it's going to take like 19 days. I mean, but once they're good to go, they're good to go, right? Um, but I do want to kind of talk a little bit about um, kind of what I look at when I'm kind of evaluating uh, BPOs and deciding on whether or not it's actually something that's worth making and also kind of explain my strategy with having these all these BPOs and what I plan to kind of demonstrate with it. Now we can't actually manufacture in this station but it still allows me to kind of show you the numbers here. So right now this TRITS value is about 11.8 we'll call it 12,000 ISK that's the value for everything on TRIT that goes into it now if we roll over now we look at the market value for the Kaldari shuttle you're looking at I mean some of these are outliers but you're looking at like 12 that's a break even amount there but we're also not uh, near Jita either in Jita I want to say it's like probably um, 18 to 20 on a good day and you're probably looking at like 15 12 to 15 on buy orders so there is quite a bit of profit there and that's something you have to kind of like just keep in mind when you're looking at any BPO and also if we max this uh, thing out 575 is what we can make and that would take 30 days to do but honestly we'd probably end up actually having to come down um, a little bit but as you can see here it's like this um, the amount of trade the value of the trade going into this was like you know 6.8 million and then the value would be like around 11 or so so you're almost almost doubling your money here but the thing too is the volume of the input material is around 15,000 cubic meters the volume of the actual shuttle itself is 287,000 cubic meters. So I I don't just look at profit when I'm, you know, looking at this stuff. I tend to look at the volume as well because that's a pretty good indicator of like how hard it's going to be to get that stuff out there to market. That's the number one thing because we can make all the shows in the world, but if we can't actually get them to a decent market where we can move that product, then it's a moot point, right? You know, it's what's the point? The other thing you you know you can probably consider here too, and what a lot of people will are suffer when they start trying to get into manufacturing is they look at this kind of situation. They're like, yeah, I can you know double almost closely double the value, but it's also probably just better for me just to like take the compressed uh, belt bar, ship it to Jita, save myself all the trouble of researching the BPO, waiting for the manufacturing job. I might as well just take the raw stuff and throw it to the market and, you know, call it a day, which is a valid thought. And it's something that I did a lot um, after, you know, analyzing a bunch of BPOs and realizing it wasn't just, it wasn't just wasn't worth the effort because the profit margins were, were not good enough. Like the profit margins plus the logistics concerns were not enough for me to even warrant going through all the steps to take it from raw to an end product. Now, a lot of people will just manufacture ships and build stuff because that is something they enjoy. It's like, for me, I enjoy mining, even though I might not necessarily do anything with the ore. 
or I don't really care about the ESC. Same thing. There are people out there that like to run the BPOs. They like to manufacture, and they don't really care about you know trying to sell the end product. They just enjoy the process of actually just making the product, and that's perfectly understandable and very, very much a legitimate reason to kind of do that. So that's kind of the goal for all the manufacturing uh, stuff that we're going to be going over in this series and in the Nullsec series. It's not necessarily going to be strictly about like, you know, making profit, but more or less just talking about the system that actually exists um, and giving you the information that you need to um, to consider when you're doing all that stuff. And like I said, job cost is also very important. So like here, this total job cost is stuff that I take into account and everything. But just like mining and just like a lot of stuff in EVE, you're you it's i just enjoy doing it for the sake of doing it for the most part i mean i think it, right now i'm just gonna like work on researching 11 caldari shuttle bpos and then we're essentially gonna like mine a bunch of trit and then just max all of these bpos out at 575 and in 30 days we're just gonna have a crap ton of shuttles the other thing you can do too is just you can sell in place you, if you, if so, for instance, if this system has a uh, a market, I could just sell everything here in this system. The downside of actually selling outside of a trade hub is you might, you you're probably gonna have a lot less. Um, you're, you're gonna move less volume on a day to day basis. But the thing about shuttles are they're kind of interesting too because they're mainly used for transit. So you could actually even go the extra mile and let's say get yourself like a crane or something throw a bunch of shuttles in there and you could go to actually like you know the first um the first the last high sec system before a null sec to a region gate kind of situation and you could just have all your little shuttles on these like markets around these key spots on the map so people are basically going to like fly their pod up to like you know the last high sec system before they get into the null sec uh slice because they're headed out to null sec. So the, well, essentially what you're doing is you're giving a, you can, then you can upcharge actually for a convenience fee. So people will go all the, I don't know, I've seen people do it. They'll go all the way to the last high sec system, buy a shuttle and then go the rest of their route all the way into null sec or wherever they're going. Um, just to kind of speed things up. It's a, uh, it's a viable option. So kind of interesting to see there. But <clears throat> I don't want this video, th this episode it was more or less going to be just like a lot of like the methodology and stuff that I thought about in terms of like manufacturing and like being a solo mining series, it's very, very understandable and probably expected that we would get into man manufacturing at some point. Um, I do have my own reservations, as you can probably tell after watching this video on what we actually can make at a profit. And every time I like even start looking into manufacturing, I always end up coming back to the same conclusion that I, you know, came to like a year ago. Uh, and that's all about like, you know, fuel blocks. And for me, fuel blocks and, uh, nanite repair paste are by far the, the best things to make, especially fuel blocks in null sec because the high demand, there's so many structures out there. There's so many people that need that stuff and you will never have a problem offloading that stuff. It's like, yeah, we can make 575 shuttles, but it would it, it would have takes us like three or four or even five months to even sell all of them. Not great, right? But we can make a crap ton of fuel blocks. Those fuel blocks will be very easily offloaded because everybody needs them. Not just for like fueling structures, but also all the reactions. I mean, that's kind of my goal too, is to kind of like, you know, um, introduce and like explain a lot of like my methodology for manufacturing but make things that actually allow us to talk about other things. So we probably will actually go and push and do the work to get manufacturing for fuel blocks up and running because that's going to allow us to, it's going to allow me to actually, you know, further demonstrate and explain reactions in NullSec because we'll have, we'll have those, uh, those fuel blocks done. I already have the fuel block BPOs actually researched in NullSec. So really all we need to set up is uh, the PI uh, for it and also um, get some equipment out there for ice mining and just really start like slowly ticking away at some ice mining there but the thing about ice is each region of nullsec has a certain type of ice 
So some null seg regions will have um, oxygen uh, or ice that produces oxygen isotopes. Some regions will have only nitrogen. For reaction, you're going to need all the different um, fuel blocks. So depending on whatever area of null you're in, I try to uh, mine whatever I can locally. So for instance, if we're if you're in like an oxygen isotope null sec area, we'll mine all that. We'll make we'll have a plenty well plenty of oxygen isotopes. But when it comes to like hydrogen, helium, all that other stuff, right? We're gonna have to import those isotopes paired with our PI, which will be the same across all the blocks, and uh, make those other three blocks that way to feed into reactions. I tend to try to like operate in um, null sec areas that have the same isotope. Uh, requirement that my uh, jump ships do now Rorkles they have like oxygen isotope requirements even though I believe I wish that Rorkles had like Omni uh, fuel requirement but they don't they're strictly like oxygen isotope but like I use a ray as a part of the jump freighter that's Kaldari so it's a nitrogen isotope uh, jump engine so Whatever, um, whatever section, I mean, you might not like the look of the different faction jump freighters and stuff like that, but if you are getting into jump capable ships like carriers, jump freighters, it's, it, it's good to know what ice is available in your null sec system. And you should pick your, your, your jump freighter based on that because people are going to be mining that ice in null sec a lot. And you actually will end up spending less buying the isotopes locally because there's an abundance of it rather than like, for instance, if you're in, you know, null sec that has um, nitrogen isotopes, but you buy like an obelisk or you buy like, you know, the Galante jump freighter or whatever, then you're, you're going to pay a premium to buy that those isotopes locally because people are importing them and or you might have to just import them yourself because you can't just go out and mine the ice in your null sec system to get your fuel. So something to keep in mind. That's why, you know, if you're in nitrogen isotope uh, null space, then get yourself a Caldari jump freighter because it's going to be just that, you know, align those things because it's like supply and demand. If all, everybody in that null seg block is mining that ice and there's just an, a, a, an abundance of that type of isotope, align your ships to that so you, uh, you spend less on fuel. But anyway... Thank you guys for watching. In the next few episodes, we're going to be talking or demonstrating a lot more about um, manufacturing and stuff like that. So we'll probably have a few of these uh, Caldari shuttle uh, BPOs done. I might actually just run a few jobs off of a unresearched one just to kind of like give a baseline and everything. And we'll kind of like go, we'll do this thing where like I'll mine the, the material, we'll make the shuttle, and then we'll attempt to like take it out to uh, Jita and sell it. And then we'll also sell some locally and we'll kind of like compare the results for both. Um, kind of like a little case study thing. But thank you for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Keep an eye out for more of EVE content coming in. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a channel membership or a channel member. That helps uh, support content going forward and everything. So thank you for watching and peace out.